this day run to be held on January 1st from 11 to 1. I'm asking that this be approved contingent on the Special Events Committee approving the move. Next is the plunge to freeze out lupus to be held on February 18th. Um, on 6th Avenue Boardwalk, uh, Beach, I'm sorry, from 10 to 4. The third annual 221 will be held on April 1st from 9 to 11, and this will be held strictly on the boardwalk. They won't be running or uh, on any streets or closing any streets. Thanks, Chief. Next is the Runapalooza on April 22nd. And again, I would request that this be approved contingent on the Special Events Committee approving the route. The New Jersey Brain Tumor Walk uh, will be held on April 29th on the boardwalk from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. And the last two are requests from Triumphant Life Church to hold a Memorial Day Week Carnival, May 23rd to 29th in Bradley Park and a back to school carnival April, August 8th through 13th in Bradley Park. Any questions? The Springwood Avenue, when is that again? That is September 10th. Yeah, September 10th, uh, December 10th. December 10th. Okay, any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Next to the agenda is matters from the city council. There is one item listed on there um, is picking a date and time for the reorganization meeting. It was suggested that the date be January 1st, 2017. A recommended time was 2 p.m. Okay, that's good. That's, that sounds good. Fine. That's good. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Jesse? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Any other matters by the city council? So I'm just going to um, pick up on uh, Leisha's uh, special events applications and provide everybody with a list of all of our tree lightings. So on November 26th at 5 p.m. there's a tree lighting in Merchants Park uh, right here at the corner of Cookman and Main. On November 26th at 6 p.m. there's a tree lighting um, on the boardwalk in the Grand Arcade. On December 2nd at 5.30, there's a tree lighting in Fireman's Park on Main between Sunset and 5th. On December 3rd, there's a tree lighting in Press Plaza at 5 o'clock. On December 10th at 5, there's a tree lighting in Springwood Park. And on December 10th at 2 o'clock, there's a Kwanzaa celebration in um, the Senior Center also on Springwood Avenue. And uh, with all of these tree lightings and everyone coming out, I encourage everyone to shop locally in our downtown businesses, our Main Street businesses, uh, boardwalk businesses, and help support our local merchants. Um, for the second year in a row, we're going to have a holiday window decorating contest. So we're asking all businesses and residents to please register. You have to register in order to be judged. Um, the business window decorating contest will be judged and awarded by December 3rd. The residents, residential will be awarded on December 15th. So you have from now until December 15th or December 14th to get your house. And it can be for just a window, a front porch, a terrace, or an entire house. So there are different prizes, and we just want people to decorate and get ready for the holidays. So thank you, and I would like to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving, and I hope you enjoy your family and your friends. I also would like to just say uh, happy Thanksgiving to everyone, and have a safe and happy one, and enjoy the turkey, and enjoy your families. Mm -hmm. A couple quick announcements. I'd like to recognize and honor the high school scholar athletes, uh, the Asbury Park High School soccer team, uh, Coach uh, John Dorsant and Dave Johnson. They had an 18-4-1 record this year. The Asbury Park High School soccer team won the Shore Conference B Central, and they were Central Group 1 championships. It was the first sectional title since 1981, an outstanding season. The Asbury Park High School football team, head coach Tim Fosco, 
Foscue, assistant coaches uh, Lamar Davenport, Nick Sean Broon, Matt Artizoni, Robert Ward, and Keith Kalia. On November 18th, the football team defeated Shore Regional in the semifinal round of the Central Ju Jersey Group 1 playoffs. On December 3rd at Keene University at 4 p.m., they play Keyport for the Jersey Group 1 title. And then on Thursday, the annual Asbury Park Neptune game will be on at Neptune High School Field at 10 a.m. So again, congratulations to the soccer team, congratulations to the football team. We wish them the best of luck against Neptune and the best of luck in the States against Keyport. And down the road after the first of the year, we'll probably be honoring both teams for their outstanding. And it's, the great part is they are scholar athletes. So great job, Asbury Park Board of Education. Thank you. That's all I have. Matters by the city manager? Nothing. Matters by the city attorney? Uh, nothing. Right. At this time, I'd like to open the meeting to the public. Each public member has three minutes to speak, and when you come to the mic, please state your name and address for the record, please. Good evening. Happy Thanksgiving. My name is Teresa Jones of Hill Drive in Neptune, former business owner and employee in the city of Asbury Park here. Um, I just want to make a statement, and I don't know whether you're aware, in light of the national election outcomes, everybody's in an uproar. Uh, the several past years with issues of civil rights and voting rights, uh, and I'm, I'm out doing stuff. I'm known as the hood nurse. I'm just going to let you guys know that the decision regarding Captain Love has put some ugliness on the city. Uh, it has increased the divide of people from the west side who've been feeling marginalized as it is with redevelopment and everything else bypassing. And folks feel that they're scapegoating. And as, since I've been here, oh goodness, I was a little girl. We had businesses here and on up until the last business that closed in 2002. This is reminiscent of the Asbury Parks police department from the 1990s. Real foul ugliness, double standards, a bunch of internal racism and craziness. So that's my statement. It's not good. Somebody needs to redo, reevaluate, reappeal, double eliminate. But this is foul because as the person who was trusted in the community, long standing, good record, and like I said, the double standards are blaring. Thank you. Thank you, Teresa. And happy Thanksgiving to you also. Dan Sparrow, 2nd Avenue. Uh, as the co-head of the uh, Downtown Merchants Guild, I would like to congratulate Hannah Walker on that fantastic award she won for uh, the web and social media. I guess the Urban Municipalities League gave her that award for doing great things in the city of Asbury Park. And I bring it up because, in part because I think it's fantastic. And she came in at a tough time, followed a really beloved human being, individual, and has done a really good job from our perspective downtown of really promoting who we are and what we're trying to do. And in our other practice, where we work with a lot of corporate clients, a lot of managers and leaders don't think millennials are individuals who are contributing to their organizations in a positive way. They're always asking us, what do we do about those millennials? Well, when I think about Hannah as a millennial, who's doing a great job for the city of Asbury Park, I suspect, or I hope that her manager and leader, I'm not sure who that is, I assume it's the city manager, but I really don't know, it could be the city council. But I assume that you're excited and proud by her award and what she's doing for the city of Asbury Park because from a downtown perspective, we're feeling um, that we are doing better this year. We've had really terrific publicity. The events are fantastic. So thank you both Hannah, city manager, City Council for the hard work and congratulations to Hannah for her wonderful work as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, uh, Rita Moreno, Waves Avenue. Uh, I reviewed the 1101 uh, project that you approved but didn't pass yet. I think we still have a few more days before it passes, right? I figured out that um, the condos alone are going to be bringing in $175 million, just the condos, besides the 
commercial besides the retail. I mean, like, this is not a good deal for Asbury Park. We all want to see the project built, but not at the cost of every taxpayer in town for the next 30 years. And then there's a paragraph in here could go to 35 years. I mean, if you're going to do something like that, do it for 10 years. These people are laughing all the way to the bank. And that two million that you talk about that we're going to get, you know when we're going to get it? After they build all the condos. I don't know if you know that, John, because you think we're going to get two million dollars right away. Yes. This might take four or five years. All the condos have to be up substantially. The hotel has to be up. The uh, commercial has to be up in the retail. And that might take four years, five years. We know what happened at North Beach. I mean, this is not a good deal. I could see you giving them 10 years, but not 30 and maybe 35. Amy's son will be 35 years old when you're finished. He's only not even one. Do you think that's a nice legacy to leave? I mean, like, you've got to review this again. And then you have a lawyer, Scotland, who's also our bond attorney. I know he's the redevelopment attorney. And then you go to the local <laughs> finance board. Those people are all appointed. I know all about them. They get $1,000 a month, and they have one meeting a month. And they don't even know what they're doing. They approve this plan? Sure, they'll approve it. They approve everything. They only meet once a month. That's if they all show up. But I mean, like, you have to review this again. This is not right. And then it says on the commercial, the retail, that we only, we get a net, we, after they have uh, all their expenses paid, we get net, what's ever left. Whatever that's going to be, it's not explained in here. There's a lot of paragraphs that are like double, you have to be, a, I don't know what to understand this. But I don't think, and all due respects to the city manager, that you were able to negotiate a deal like this. It's not right. It really isn't right. I want the project to go up. It's a beautiful <coughs> building, but not at our cost. I mean, they're laughing all the way to the bank. 30 years, 35 years, come on. You gotta do something about this. Yeah? Okay. Hey, I've been reading this for a week. Are you done? Yeah, I, wa I want something done. This is not that, right. Are you, okay, you're done. Your time's up. You're three minutes up. So you are done. So you said something. I'm going to respond, and then the city manager can respond. You, you were false on your statement that I did not know it kicked in when it's completed. Every pilot kicks in when it's completed. So, I mean, we all knew that. You were completely false when you said Scotland is our bond attorney. Scotland has not been our bond attorney for a year and a half. So you're mixing... Truths with false or your opinions with false statements, which isn't like you read it. So you usually do your homework very well. On those two, you were wrong. As far as like the condominium <coughs> costs and everything, you're right. But it's, it's going to bring in two million dollars a year plus plus a two point five percent increase every year. Now we're hoping in a year or two we can stabilize taxes because we can't stabilize taxes until we're off transitional aid, and you know that. But meanwhile, so when your taxes are stabilized in a couple of years, they still pay a 2.5% increase. Should we give them that for free? No, it's a 2.5% increase. And you add up 2.5% on 2 million over 30 years, the numbers start getting very large. In our opinion, our financial experts' opinion, it's a good deal for the city of Asbury Park. One twelfth, more than 10% of the income for the entire city tax rate is coming from one block. And again, they'll sell you the rights to build without a pilot. They need a pilot because you're talking about it's going to be 180 million, whatever. What is it? But you're not subtracting what it costs to build. Do you think this thing's going to be built for a million dollars? No. Okay, so they're not laughing all the way to the bank. Are they going to make a profit? Absolutely. Name me one business person <coughs> that's not into it to make a profit. So we have the right to disagree. I, again, I'm surprised you made a couple of mistakes. It's not like you. <coughs> So no big deal, but I think it's a good deal, and I'm not changing my vote. And Michael, if you want to add anything, yeah, each you're talking about e prime e property. E okay, right. Reedy, thank you, you're John. Done. Your three minutes are up. Um, each component. There's four components. There's the parking garage, the retail, the condos. Each and then the other one. I can't remember off the top of my head. Each, when each component gets a TCO, 
that's when it comes on board. We had a very large meeting this afternoon. The mayor was in attendance. Kevin was in attendance of their scheduling. They are due to be completed in early to mid-2019. With, And that's the end of the components coming on board. So once they get a TCO, we start receiving the pilot money. They have a 10-year carrying cost on this. That means the first 10 years, they are losing money on it. This is That's when you start looking at the 30 years. It is right now estimated to be $165 million construction costs on top of $30 million in soft costs with the architects and the engineers. They have a 10-year carrying cost of this project. That is a very, very long time for any company to be losing money on a project before they anticipate start making money. The only way this project works is through a pilot because of that 10-year steel concrete construction where if you saw what the three of us saw today about the amount of concrete this is going to be, it would blow your mind. This is a huge construction project that's going to change the face of the city. But what you said was wrong. Once each component comes on, we start receiving the pilot. The last one on, I think it was June of, of 19, they're going to be starting, they hope, in early January with pilings. They are going to go as fast as they can, and our inspectors are going to go as fast as we can. That's why we met today. There was 30 people in this room. So the only way this project works is with the pilot because of the carrying costs. It's an enormous, enormous lift for ISTAR. So why does it have to be 30 years? Nobody else has a 30-year pilot. There's, there's I called 30 other years towns. Here. And in fact, I called Long Branch. They have a, a huge project going. This is only 10. The Long Branch project is 10 years, but it's stick construction. It's not concrete and steel. And that was in the paper a couple weeks, a couple months ago. And then we actually looked at it. The mayor and I, had, he called me at 7.30 in the morning about, did you see the paper? I said no. He explained what was going on. McMenamin of Scotland is the attorney for Long Branch. So we were on the phone with Glenn and Jennifer, and they said the article was wrong, that the money was actually too low, that Long Branch was making more money on it than what it was. We asked the questions, how does it compare to ours? Because we anticipated someone bringing this up. We thought it was going to be you. We thought it was going to be a couple months ago. And it came down to you have the 10-year carrying cost of a steel and concrete building versus stick construction in Long Branch, which is much cheaper, and you get a return of investment faster. It's the carrying cost. It's a huge... That project's not $165 million. I think it was 65 or 38 it, it was a third of what we're doing here. That's why the difference is, is in Long Branch, where Scotland McMenamin is the attorney. So we were able to compare apples to oranges, and it didn't work. He's also our bond attorney. No. No, John Cantalupo of Archer no. Griner is That's our bond said. attorney. He's not the bond attorney anymore? Hasn't been for a no. year and a half. Oh, I didn't know that. But... I 30 years, 35 years. I mean, that's a long time. Okay, Rita. Well. Your three minutes are up. And uh, you, well, by the way, when do we get to two million? He just told you it comes in in pieces when the COs are done. I know, but that's like four years down the road. No, it's a maximum of three year build up. They, they're picking up, we had a meeting today. You must have not heard Michael. They want to start. You to correct your papers then. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Rita. Okay, thank you. Jerry? Um, happy Thanksgiving to everybody in the room. Thank you. Um, are we going to get a timeline on how the, the, the ocean front's going to be finished in a redevelopment area? Is there going to be a timeline that we can see on the computer that what happened and what's going to happen in the future? Because personally, I think 30 years is too long for the tax abatement, but you took the time to explain it. Thank you very much for taking the time. But I really want a timetable or timeline on what's going on and what happened in the past and what's projected for the future, including this building, because now we have 2019. Let's see if that happened, because if you have to give up one building for 30 years of tax abatement, then you can say we're not doing it again if they don't live up to the timeline. But everybody should see it on the computer or in the building, you know, like when they're putting money in a savings account, watch it grow. The other thing, are you guys getting report monthly reports from the department heads? Because I would like well, like to see what's going on and see how we're staying within the budget. Because everybody says one thing and then things kind of just slip out of their hand. And that we listen, you will be elected because people trust you. We need continuity. 
but what can I say? It's, we need your help. So can you make sure we're gonna have a timeline? Can you get a commitment out of the city manager? That, will it be up before the end of the year? Or, because I've been asking for the last six months. I know the GPS took two years, but I, two years to wait for another timeline. I've been last, asking for the last 10 years for a timeline that never happened. Are we gonna get a commitment when we're gonna have one? We can't do one. The um, master's developer agreement and the subsequent developer agreement, the I-Star, Madison, Asbury agreements, don't have timelines for when they're supposed to do things, because we've looked into this, because um, there's a frustration on everyone's part to get things done faster. So the agreements don't say you have to do A by December, B by January, C by August. It's not there. So we can push and prod, but unless someone comes to us with something, our feet are to the fire because we can't do anything. You know what this reminds me of when you hear a bad novel and the woman just waiting for the act to be over with so she can go to sleep. That's why it just sounds really bad. It's agreements that were done many, many years ago that there should have been the timelines. Everyone agrees with it. Well, you guys can still create one so we can see what's on there so we know takes, what's going on. It takes two parties. If, if iStar says this is what we're doing for 1101, that's one thing but they don't have to tell us what they're planning next until they come to us next. And we would love to have those in the agreements. We would love to have Madison Asbury have those in the agreements, but they're not there. And put, a, put, a, put, put the other shoe there. Why would they then tell us, okay, this is what we're going to do, and then behold it to that date where then they can be in default? They would never give up that right. So we'll wait till 30 years, well, till 2030, and when they're not done, we'll say, oh, well, that's it? Well, the, I think there's been a very good history of iStar. Madison Asbury, they had a history 10 years ago. They're allegedly ramping up. They're supposed to have some plans to us in the beginning of January. I'll be honest with you. I'll, when I see it, I'll believe it. But iStar has done everything that they're supposed to do. Brian told us today that once 1101 gets all their final internal controls, once the piling start coming in early next year, he's going to come back with what he wants to do next. So... Hopefully, we can have more to report, but until we can somehow get that in the agreements, which we'll never do, because why would someone give up that power? It's going to be very, very difficult. Okay, and what about monthly reports? We, I recommended to the council back in September to bring in a software provider, the Canning Group, um, to do exactly that. We are on target for January. Um, I've okay. had a couple of discussions with, with Sean about it, Sean Canning. Um, there'll probably be something going out in the next week or so to staff saying this is what we're looking for. It's all Excel based. It's all web based. I've talked about this. It will be monthly. The code says quarterly, but it's an Excel dump, so it should be easy. Right now, we're on target for January. Okay, and then we can share this program with other towns. That way, we could be a leader of the pack. If they want to pay for it, they can pay for it. They can call. No, Sean. I'm just saying, if we share the wealth, you're helping the taxpayers for the whole state. But thank you for your help, and happy Thanksgiving again. Thank you, Jerry. Happy Thanksgiving. And let me just, we all agree with you, but it was a deal signed in 2002 that they have 30 years with no time frames. We've looked into it numerous times. The reason that the ban show is being done because this council held Madison Marquette in default. Whenever we can hold them in default, we're going to hold them in default. But we're not going to hold them in default if we're going to spend a quarter of a million dollars and lose a case. If we can win a case like we did on the band show, and that's why that band show is being done, not because Santa Claus and they became nice people. You're right, they're business people out to, out to make a buck. So when we can hold them in default and they're not performing, we will do that and continue to do that. And this is the only council that's held them in default. And that's why the band show is going to be it started. It will be completed. And it be it I Star, be it anybody, if they're in default and we can prove it, we will take that action. But right now, we can't take any action without wasting your tax dollars. Uh, I'm just wondering that when they do the band show, they're going to put that sign that's going to tell the, the wave and the time and the events that are going on on the beachfront. I thought that would be a good way to do promotion for the beachfront. It's not in their plans right now. Oh, you could ask for it maybe? Yes. Thank you a lot. Okay, thank you. Motion to adjourn public portion? Move, Move it. it. Second. Second. Move on to minutes. We have minutes for November 9, 2016, regular session, November 9, 2016, executive session. Can I have a motion to move the minutes? Move, move it. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? 
Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Councilmember Kendall. Yes. Deputy uh, Mayor Moore. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, we'll move on to the consent agenda. We have resolution 2016-448, uh, review of special event applications. That was discussed this evening. We have resolution 2016-449, resolution authorizing the payment of payroll in the amount of $919,465.11. Resolution 2016-450, resolution authorizing the transfer of appropriation in fiscal year 2016 budget. Resolution 2016-451, resolution of the City of Asbury Park County, Mama, State of New Jersey, providing for the insertion of special items of revenue in the 2016 municipal budget. The City of Asbury Park, pursuant to NJSA 40A, column 4-87. This is a Chapter 159 for Springwood Park. And we have Resolution 2016-452, Resolution of the City of Asbury Park, County of Monmouth, State of New Jersey, providing for an insertion of special item of revenue in the 2016 budget of the City of Asbury Park, pursuant to NJSA 40A, column 4-87. And this is the Chapter 159 for the JAG grant. Would anybody like any of those resolutions removed from the agenda? Motion to approve the consent agenda? Move it. Second. Council Member Chapman? Yes. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. We'll move on to individual resolutions. The first one is resolution 2016-453. Resolution authorizing the payment of bills in the amount of $2,447,000. $483.49. Mayor Moore advised me correctly, I was incorrect last time, <laughs> that he have seen from line item 6-01-23-220-000-209. Have a motion to approve the bills? Move it. Second. And do we have any comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2016-454, Resolution of the City of Asbury Park County, Mermis, Monmouth, <laughs> State of New Jersey, authorizing a compensation payment to Phil James Leo upon his separation and retirement. Can I have a motion to approve this resolution? Move it. Have a second? Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Move on to resolution 2016-455, authorizing the purchase of an exchange, exchange, yeah, exchange server for the police department. Can I have a motion to approve this resolution, please? Move it. Second. And do we have any comments or questions? Yes. Somebody explain what an exchange server is and like art language. Is it a telephone? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> um, an exchange server server is an email server for the police department. Currently, our email is hosted by a third party vendor, and the police department, under attorney general guidelines, should actually host their own email for security reasons. Um, this is one of the things that should have been done probably five years ago, seven years ago when the city's email address was set up, the city at asburypark.com. Um, without getting too into the security side of it, just think of it this way. You send an email to the police department, it goes to someone else first and it comes here. So that's not the most secure system in the world. This will actually make it secure. The issue, and this is why the cost is high and we did get a couple prices on this, is that since that third-party vendor already hosts the city of asburypark.com, we have to find a way to pull it out without changing the email addresses. If you go to most places, there'll be two addresses, like a city, and then the police department has their own for that reason. But since these email addresses are everywhere, we can't lose them and change them. It would just be horrible. So we've been working with S I've been working with SHI for about four months trying to figure this out and put this proposal together. Um, Two other vendors were in the $55,000 range at state contract. Uh, so this meets all the guidelines that they were supposed to have done years ago. Okay, so, and I, I, I understand that and I think it's a good idea. Does that mean the cost for the other one will drop also because they're no longer doing this service? 
we'll be able to pull out some of the emails. We Emails are purchased by block, like one to 250. So it depends on where we fall. It's 130 emails we'll be able to lose. Quite honestly, what I was thinking of is, in my opinion, just because of how Open Public Records Act has been trending over the years, that all the professionals on the boards, um, all the volunteers on the boards should actually have a city email address. So when there is an OPA request of the planning board, zoning, Sunset Lake Commission, Wesley Lake, anyone that's associated with us, we can actually retrieve it easier and be in compliance and have some more control of it. But that's going to be after this is done. This is going to take, this is going to take a lot of time. Thank you. Any other questions? Councilman Chapman? Yes. Councilman Clayton? Yes. Councilman Kendall? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Next is Resolution 2016-456, a resolution of the City of Asbury Park releasing the performance bond for the St. James Condominium, 300-302 Cookman Avenue, Block 3207, all lots. <coughs> I have a motion to approve this resolution? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Yeah, just do me a favor, give us a brief explanation of this so it, that everybody knows we're not just giving them $459,000 that they're not due. Uh, they've completed the project. The CO has been issued. This is the release of the bonds. This is something that we started in the summer. Uh, legally, we're supposed to, but it's never been released officially before. So you're going to see these as projects get from TCOs to COs the release of all the bonds. And this is their money that they put up for a bond? It's their money. It's not city money. It's right. okay. all theirs. That's all I wanted the public to know. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Mm -hmm. Councilwoman Chapman. Yes. Councilwoman Clayton. Yes. Councilman Kendall. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Okay, we'll now move on to ordinances. The first ordinance for introduction this evening is Ordinance 2016-49. An ordinance amending and supplementing Chapter 4, General Licenses, Section 4.9, Display of merc Merchandise in Public Areas, Outdoor Sidewalk Cafe, Section 4.9-5, Annual Licensing Fee of the Code of the City of Asbury Park. Can I have a motion to introduce this, license, uh, this uh, ordinance? Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Public hearing is scheduled for December 14, 2016 for this ordinance. Move on to the next mm -hmm. ordinance, which is 2016-50. An ordinance amending and supplementing section 4-1 business licenses by amending subsection 4-1.4 fees and subsection 4-1.9 standards of operation Revocation is suspension complaints of Chapter 4, General Licensing of the Code of the City of Asbury Park. I have a motion to move this ordinance, please. Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? Yeah, could you uh, just talk about this for a minute, Mike? Or Cindy, if you want to. Or Cindy. The first part we're adding in... Um, if you remember, in the beginning of the year, we had a complaint regarding the um, realtors having to have pay, but the professionals did not. So this rectifies it by adding professionals into the mercantile okay. um, licenses. And also, um, we revised the, um, the, uh, the section for revocation or suspension of, of licenses. It just makes it an easier transition and shortens the steps should somebody um, is not in compliance with the city or state state codes. Okay, thank you. Any other comments or questions? Councilwoman Chapman? Yes. Councilwoman Clayton? Yes. Councilman Kendall? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Next is ordinance, oh, I'm sorry, public hearing is scheduled for December 14, 2016. Next is Ordinance 2016-51, an ordinance amending and supplementing sub subsection 3-338.2, entitled penalty, Penalties of Section 3-38, Use of Bicycles of Chapter 3, Police Regulations of the Code of the City of Asbury Park. Have a motion to introduce this ordinance, please. Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilwoman Chapman? Yes. Councilwoman Clayton? Yes. 
Councilman Kendall? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Public hearing is scheduled for December 14, 2016. Ordinance 2016-52, vacating and dedicating Boston Way right of way. Can I have a motion to approve this ordinance? Move introduce it. this ordinance. Move it. Second. Second. Comments or questions? Yes, somebody explain it because I couldn't read this little tiny map, so I don't have a clue what we're doing. <laughs> It's a vacation of yeah. that little area for Boston Way. Um, we'll get you a bigger map. It's just a what simple little area. What area? The Bo Boston Way, the street itself. The only Boston Way, besides the name of the project, is up find out is the street called Boston Way. So are we vacating the street. What are we vacating? The map isn't highlighted. I'll get you the highlighted yeah. map. Okay. And to what? the parking area right because if you if you recall during the the planning phase the street bumps out a little bit and that we needed to vacate portion of that and I'll get that map too there was like a, a little ellipse that had to be vacated um, I'll get that in the hot and right here mm -hmm. that. okay this, this portion so the street remains, but this particular area. Okay, so it still stays a city street. So yes. we're just vacating part of Boston. Yep. Okay, thank you. Any other comments or questions? Councilwoman Chapman? Yes. Councilwoman Clayton? Yes. Councilman Kendall? <coughs> yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Public hearing is scheduled for December 14, 2016. We have one ordinance for second reading public hearing this evening. Ordinance 2016-48, an ordinance amending and supplementing chapter 28 health regulations by adding subsection 28-4, sterile syringe access program with the revised general ordinance of the city of Asbury Park. I have a motion to open ordinance 2016-48 to the public. Okay. Move it. Second. Anybody like, like that? Please state your name and um, address for the record, please. Teresa Jones, <coughs> Drive in Neptune. Um, question with this. I, I know the, the services and the programs. Will there be an ability for the VNA to link with the services or addiction that are outside the city of Asbury Park and the major HIV uh, AIDS care provider, which is Meridian Health at the FQ, uh, the um, health center there and infectious disease because this seems to be fragmented. I, I don't necessarily see that our IV drug users might be down there and how will they be accessing uh, needles, um, who, what, where, is public works involved with the stuff dropped on the streets? This, is, this seems to be a disconnect to me. When myself and the deputy mayor first met with the VNA, that was our exact question. Mm -hmm. uh, what the VNA does, it's, they can't force people to go through other services. Um, they do do an individual service plan for people who want it. I know what they provide. But they can't force someone to go somewhere no, else. No, it's not the matter of the forcing. I know what they provide. This yes. is a disconnect. They are going to be providing services that they can and referring but it's up to the individual at the end of the no, day. No, I understand to take that. all of that. There's a disconnect in this program. If it were infectious disease at Meridian Health through their health center, through the A team that was providing this, I could see it see it as a go. The way the VNA providing primary care and other auxiliary services, the majority of the IV drug users or anybody that would be getting any kind of medical services would be at the Meridian or Jersey Shore Addiction Services. That's why I'm, I'm not getting this. I just wanted to just put that out there as the hood nurse. 
You know what I'm saying? So uh, no, I, I understand. I think we're just not we're on the same page i think i think we're just not communicating it clearly yeah, because sometimes organizations locally will bite off more than they can chew no the vna has said that they'll do referrals it's just up to the yeah. people like i said sometimes agencies bite off more than they can chew history repeats itself thank you <clears throat> motion to close move it, move it. second I have a motion to adopt uh, ordinance 2016-48. Move it. Second. Councilwoman Chapman. Yes. Councilwoman Clayton. Yes. Councilman Kendall. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. No other business. Motion to close. Move it. Everybody have a happy Thanksgiving and a safe Thanksgiving.